Uh, if you're not gonna lie like you usually do. I can't yeah, I believe usually, you would say that. I usually like. I said it before, and I'll say it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. All right. <clears throat> the group started together as fellow travelers in a caravan that was raided by some particularly vicious bandits. Um, while you were recovering, right. while you were recovering in the town called Cabed Angren, the town elders recruited you for a very simple straightforward task travel under the cover of night to a nearby seer's tower pay them for some information as to where the thieves are hiding so that the town folk can deal with them because their previous efforts had failed uh, believing the seer and his men were indeed the bandits they were looking for you wholesale slaughtered them without suffering anything more than a few scratches yourself as i recall uh, in the process of searching the tower, you found a gypsy slave girl named Treva, who traded her knowledge of the tower in exchange for her freedom, and the group's promise to return her to her family. What do you think? Um, with that help, you found a hidden library and a variety of treasure. And to appease an angry ghost, and avoid the promise of a vengeful curse, you delivered a significant portion of that treasure to a local orphanage. Right. Uh, and the town elders rewarded you handsomely and for all you had done. Um, in order to fulfill your promise to Treva, uh, the Vistiani gypsy, no longer a slave, you guys traveled north to a dirty tavern called the Mud Hole. Uh, the uh, proprietor, an old man named One Thumb, agreed to tell you where uh, you guys could find her family under the condition that you escort one of his caravans north to the crossroads, which is um, the last major settlement before you enter um, what are now called the Wastelands of Zor. Uh, upon reaching the crossroads, you, under the cover of darkness, you guys stole a a stone vase, vase, some kind of a container from a sleeping nobleman, uh, and you returned it to One Thumb. You chose not to become one of his employees. You graciously declined that offer, and instead you headed east through the Greenwood uh, to begin your search for Trava's family. The first piece of civilization you discovered uh, was an odd and dilapidated hamlet called New Haven, which is where you are now. Uh, all the residents here dress the same. The women wear black skirts and white shirts. Men wear black pants and white shirts. They all wear hats. They all have beards. And the beards are all trimmed the same way. They are uh, insular and do not like strangers. You killed three armed men in order to save a small child from being burnt at the stake. But you managed to turn everyone in the town against you in the process. <laughs> uh, you can, I think, thank the paladin for that move. <laughs> He's a paladin. He's got to protect the children. <laughs> That's right. Hey. Uh, the, hey. town, the town seems <clears throat> desperate. Uh, having spent money on weapons that no one seems to know how to use. They built a guard station to pr help protect the town. Um, and they hired uh, witch hunters to try and uh, help them. One brave citizen, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, told you that he believes the town is cursed. Their Hi. priest died months ago, uh, last winter, actually. And uh, strange things are afoot. Not stranger things, but just strange things. Uh, the crops are withering, livestock has gone missing, and dark portents abound. Uh, unfortunately, this was supposed to be a place th for you guys to restock your supplies for the next leg of the journey. And as I recall, your food supplies are beginning to run dangerously low. Did I skip over anything important or... Anything that you guys feel the need to bring up and remind yourselves of? Um, I have questions. 
Shoot. So I, I remember we were looking for the priest and we went to the building in the back of the small town and we were trying to get in. It was locked. Like it was a church, right? It was. And I have a fancy, fancy, actually probably one of the worst maps I've ever made. <laughs> but let's bring that up. Do we know how the priest died? I forget. <clears throat> Fever took him. What was that? Fever took him. Fever. Oh, yeah, good fever. notes. Yep. Fever. This it is... turns out I do have notes. Excellent. Because I lost mine. Sweet. This is the very simple hamlet that you guys are in. Um, the two buildings to the south are storage and a stable. Um, the main building up top with the gray roof uh, is the only building that is not... The roof is not sagging. There's not moss growing up the sides of the wood walls. Um, that's the church. Yep. And yes, the church, uh, the front doors to the church are padlocked closed. Okay. Uh, there is a small cemetery on the left-hand side. Uh, there's a storage building directly on the right. And then there are two uh, community buildings, or three community buildings um, on the right-hand side. There's the pyre in the middle. There are, next to that low stone wall um, by the church is a set of stocks. When you guys looked at those, you noticed an unusually uh, large amount of um, old blood uh, marking where people have uh, been put in them. There is a, an, a hand cart in the bottom left corner by the by the stable storage that's full of spears and there's a few shields lying against it as well uh there's some barrels of oil uh there's a supply cart uh, there's some sacks of grain on the corner on the right and uh although you're not technically here right now um there when you were last here there were three dead bodies lying in the middle of the town center um, and because it's been raining incessantly as long as you guys have been here, um, there is everywhere you walk in this town, there seems to be this thick black mud that cakes onto your boots and gets onto the knees of your clothing. It seems to be everywhere. Um, it's been a very wet summer, um, not just here in this town, but everywhere. Um, the swamp that this town butts up against has risen in level, and it's actually the water touches that stone wall on your left. Mm -hmm. um, as you traveled north out of the town, thanks to um, Sir Morgan's spell, uh, where he you guys tried to find the family that fled, the family of the young girl who who uh, was not burned at the stake, thanks to your efforts. You traveled north past several farms. You noticed that all the farms, the buildings are all identical. Um, the building is on the left. The farm is on the right. The crops are all in the front yard. Um, everything seems to be the same at every single farmhouse. But you followed the road uh, to its end. Um, it ended in a river. The river is deeper than it normally is due to the rains. And you can tell that the, the locals don't cross the river often because the road almost end, almost ends at the river. And on the far side, it turns into much more of a footpath. Okay. Um, the three men that we killed, I seem to remember that they were like bandits, which is... Were they? No, oh, they, were, they were mercenary witch hunters. That's what it was. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, Didn't we find like a corpse or something by the river? A so, on the far side of the river, there was uh, a dead animal. Hmm. You never went across to see what kind of an animal it was, but it could have been livestock or it could have been a a large deer or something. You're not entirely sure. Okay. Uh, you tried to find the priest's house, as I recall, um, right. and you discovered that after he had passed away in last winter. It was burned to the ground. You wanted to find and see if he had some kind of a diary or some kind of information that would um, give you, that would that would explain what was going on with the town. But because they burned it to the ground with all of his possessions, that didn't work. 
And then as you were coming back into town, you spied smoke in the distance. And uh, as you approached, um, you didn't get very close, but you could see the farm of the family that had fled their house, their crops, and their barn uh, were all on fire. And a large group of townsfolk, and by large, I mean 20 people, because this isn't a very populated area, Mm -hmm. uh, were milling about, uh, talking to each other, watching the flames burn and black smoke curling into the sky. And that was the farm of the girl that we saved? Correct. Yeah. All right. I kind of wanted to murder a lot of people. A lot of ignorance going around That's here. That's a pally for you. There is definitely a lot of ignorance in this village. It, yeah. The impression that you've had so far it, is that these people don't know how or just aren't interested in taking care of themselves or saving themselves. And... They seem somewhat lost. And there is absolutely, there was nobody who was willing to talk to us, if I remember correctly. No. There was not. Okay. Um, all right. This place sucks. I don't say that, I think it. Are we on the other side of the river where that animal was? No, you haven't crossed over to that side yet. Okay, so it's still on our left or whatever. Okay. Uh, yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any other questions about where we left off? Or oh. why you're here, or what you've seen so far? Um, I do have one other question. So New Haven and the river that we're at, where is that in relation to the world player map? Uh, you'll see a tiny little house in the middle of the forest. Oh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> it's on the path. <laughs> a tiny little house. Yep, so if we're you going the... west. Oh, you're... I see it. Okay. Yep, there it is. You're going west. I had Craven's to family is uh, to the west, and the fastest way to get there was through the Greenwood. However, One Thumb warned you that the Greenwood is still considered wild. So um, it's best if you're going to travel to stay in a group and stay on the path. Uh, so that you don't get lost. Okay. Well, that's just as well because. Where's the river on here? Yeah. It's not a it's not a major river. It's like a creek kind of river. Gotcha. Okay. So we are traveling west. So, what do you guys say we cross this creek and blow this popsicle stand? Well, uh, if we're ready to, does anyone else have any other questions? <laughs> Going once, going twice. Perfect. Yeah. While I, you guys, oh, go ahead. I, I, I've kind of my mission here was to find Minister Holland. He's dead. His stuff has been burned. These people are horrible people. They need uh, a priest sent to them to, and possibly an army. I agree. I don't see any reason why we should stick around here, though. Maybe we can find a priest and send him back. <laughs> While the uh, the group of you are talking, um, and you're a ways away from the burning building and the uh, the uh, townsfolk that are uh, talking to each other, watching it burn, <clears throat> and they're talking very animated and. Uh, they're not happy, but they seem very satisfied with the work they're doing. There is one figure who does not is not one of the villagers. They're dressed differently, and they are lurking amongst the villagers, but very much on the fringes of that group. Hmm. Um, I say we go talk to him. The woman sees you. Um, none of the other... Uh, villagers do. They're much more preoccupied with what they're working on. And she begins walking across the field towards you. 
And and why did you have to say lurk? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, not uh, the meek women who avoid contact of the village. This is um, a sorrow. And if you remember when you went to the crossroads, um, the emperor's cousin had raised an army of sorrow warriors, the like Vikings, from the next the neighboring country and was working his way towards the capital. This person is dressed like one of them. Oh. And this person um, walks towards you with um, purpose. And I will let Matt describe what you see. Oh. And and this is the thing I just realized. We didn't do height and weight for my character, so I wrote one foot and two pounds. Oh, no, I did that for you. You're <laughs> oh, welcome. Did you? Thank you. You're tiny. Are you a man or a woman? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't even notice that I am even a, a humanoid at all, I guess. But, yeah, I, I'm... I'm definitely Sorrel Bear Tribe kind of uh, uh, race, so I imagine until I roll, I'm probably like closer to six feet versus five for for a female. Um, very well muscled in a, a rigid leather jerkin uh, in terms of armor, leaning heavily against a staff and almost walking like it's a crutch uh, right now as I head oh. towards you. Um, Bl raven black hair, emerald green eyes as I get closer, and a bunch of jewelry that looks more like it's uh, uh, rustic and ceremonial versus anything that's worth something. Uh, as I get towards you, I'll, I'll raise a hand up and I'll, I'll say, Oh, it, it is so good to meet someone that is not of this village. Uh, <laughs> Are, are you here to discover the, the undead that walk during the day? Undead? Oh, sorry, unlife. As I realize <laughs> what uh, game I'm in. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. the, the dead that walk. <laughs> the only reason why I ask is that strapping young man with all the holy symbols attached to him. I was about to say, you piqued <laughs> my interest. <laughs> <laughs> and sorry, um, in terms of um, in terms of you guys, just as an introduction, what do you guys end up looking like? Let me look. <laughs> I know it's been so. To reacquaint long myself with myself. Exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. I figured this would be a great way for everyone to have an excuse to once again re-describe themselves. That was an amazing introduction, by the way. Oh, thank you. Is um, is Treva with us? Treva is indeed with you. Would you does like me to describe her first? Does she recognize the accent? Mm. Um, she leans over and whispers quietly to you. I think she is from Staral. Okay. Mm. Okay. Do, do, do. So, um, my character, Nino, she is, she's only five feet tall and she looks rather light but she's more muscle than anything. Um, but she looks like a pretty sneaky person when you first look at her. Okay. She's kind of got like a dark, ruddy complexion. She looks a lot like uh, the the PFP that I have up. Right. And she's pretty soft-spoken, and you notice that she sticks relatively close to Kamau, and Kamau's familiar. Oh, okay. <sighs> but... My eyes are always darting around and observing everything. Very furtive. Yes. I guess since you already said my name, I'll introduce myself next. Mm. I'm a high man, um, about six foot five. This uh, is Kamal, dark, my wife. Yeah, Kamal. Right. Uh, dark skin, uh, golden hair, purple eyes, uh, about 205. Um, what can I? What else can I say? Oh, I'm in uh, chainmail armor. Um, I've got a sword strapped to my back and a uh, 
a big uh, pole axe in my hand, and um, standing beside me is a uh, pretty large uh, lion. Oh, wow. Maybe I wasn't so... Well, no, actually, I end up being closer to you and the lions when I approach then. Uh, it's one oh, lion no. right now, despite it, the picture. Apologies, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got attacked by a kitten. That's oh. the lion. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He came out of fucking midair. <laughs> like Hobbs they do that. with Calvin. Oh. You want to play. <laughs> Um. Yeah, that's that's good enough for now. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Noah. And then my name is Aiko, and I look very much like my avatar as well. Um, she's about average height. Um, she's very lean, not not so much muscular, but lean. Um, strawberry blonde hair, green eyes, and she's wearing common clothes. Um, you see, um. A quarterstaff poking out from behind her, and you see a frog on one end of the quarterstaff. Oh, sweet. Um, what else do we hear? Froggy. My froggy. My <laughs> froggy. <laughs> and that's about it. Nothing to nothing that stands out really. Okay, so same kind of thing. If if there's an animal um, Varla, I just named her because I forgot to name her, <laughs> is, uh, is between you and Kamal then. Okay. Okay. So Varla is what? Sorry, I, I missed. Oh, and sorry, Varla in terms of, uh, her abilities or? I don't know. How she look? Oh yeah. I apologize then. So she's basically a strapping young lass and she's got a, a quarter staff with, twin cobras almost like a medical twin cobras yeah oh. almost like a medical thing but with Damn. cobras instead of you know regular serpents Wait. it's it's definitely a uh quite striking in terms of her wealth that she's displaying and then has this amazing staff uh, carved from you know an ebony wood interesting nice Am I Kamal, something that you notice, because you're always, um, even in the back of your mind or in the corner of your eye, uh, you're aware of how Asha reacts near uh, people, because yep. uh, while she is very well trained and, of course, uh, follows your commands as, as uh, or your direction uh, as well as she can, but she hardly reacts at all to Varla. Uh... Interesting. Ooh. I'll, Where um, she seems to react constantly uh, whenever Sir Morgan or Iko or even Treva come near. Interesting. Yes. Um, I mean, that can mean so many things. Yeah. <laughs> it's just something that occurs to the uh, your, your mind's eye that it, it strikes you maybe even... Uh, 30 seconds later that you think, wait a minute, her her ears didn't go back, she didn't bristle, she didn't change her, her stance at all, she just seemed to accept her, which is I'll very unusual. Her ear. She obviously, as, as always, she, she leans into it a little bit more. Okay. I probably would have noticed that behavior too, just because I've been traveling with the two of them for so long. Well, uh, that's entirely possible. Poison dice. <laughs> Who's those? Those are fun. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you guys have access to them too, but they were the free ones from Fantasy Grounds a little while ago. Oh, I haven't played so, so long. Yeah, if you guys click on your dice, there should be a bunch of freebie ones you can click on. That'll probably end up being about a half hour before you decide on one, but... <laughs> yeah. Oh, no! So many cool dice! Yeah, exactly. Damn! There's no, like I stars one. Oh, and no, hearts that one. And you name it. Ooh. What's... Sorry, GM. Next game. <laughs> no, you're fine. I I'm busy right now. Exactly. <laughs> I still can't get yeah. to the page. I can only set the color. Those Ooh. are fun. <laughs> okay. Do, do, do. 
uh, so uh, while you guys play with dice, then I'll, I'll even introduce introduce <laughs> myself as a player. Um, uh, when I was a kiddo, 13, 14 ish, just uh, in maybe grade eight, grade nine, uh -huh. uh, I ended up working for a comic store just on the side kind of thing because I was too young, and uh, ended up learning about gaming because the GM would invite a bunch of his buddies to the back room where they would play with plexiglass over top of a, a big uh, pin plotter map that was to scale in terms of, you know, five foot sections with doors that were drawn on the map and they would draw on top of the plexiglass so that they could dry erase or wet erase it. And I immediately fell in love with whatever the hell they were doing because of that. So turns out it was Role Master, and I ended up buying any and everything that basically had to do with Role Master back then. Um, ended up getting my first set of dice, which was uh, crystal clear black and green. And I, I would always, to this day, choose something that didn't have a 10 side so that you could choose whatever color if you played pen and paper. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the jokes, I'm here for the laughs, and I'm <laughs> here for the movie one-liners and quotes, so. Sweet. Awesome. That's cool. So, so we can ask you plenty of role master questions too. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> GM's word is law, baby. No, I, I mean just about you know details and and how the game like this system is very new to me. This is like the first campaign that I've ever played, and I was we were raised on like D and D, oh, and okay. most of my groups play Five E right now. But I've played um, like Second Edition and Third. Um, so Rollmaster is a lot more robust than D and D, and yeah, there's crunchy. a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a lot no. more new to me as well. Yeah, and yeah. in that sense, then no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course the DM's word is law. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. He left out the most important uh, reason why people like him. Oh, oh, he's Canadian. That too. That's very true. <laughs> Ah, you're Canadian, eh? Yeah, that's right. Born and bred on the wet coast of BC. Nice. Uh -huh. And not west. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're most of us are, are out east in Ontario. Yeah, I heard that was sadly the case. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have family in St. Catharines, though, so I'm definitely more eastern than western bred. Oh, do you really? Yeah, yeah. Big Reese family over there in Walton's. Mm, nice. Do you know Mike from uh, Canmore? <laughs> oh, yeah, Mike from Canmore? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but yeah, many apologies. I I do like the, the quick comebacks and one-liners and being on my feet for having fun and laughing. So apologies oh, well, this... ahead of time, GM. This will be this will be a, a good game then. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. Um, I, I have I, to introduce Sir Morgan. Yes. Uh, so I'm Sir Morgan, and uh, I'm a high man. With I'm also six foot five with brown hair, brown eyes, <laughs> nice brown beard, <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm in a chain shirt with a uh, hot helmet and sword and board. Okay. And yeah, uh, uh, religious symbols. Uh, I am a paladin of K. Ah, strength god. Okay, war god. Yeah. And uh, I am definitely interested in uh, uh, the dead that walk. Hmm. Well, this is very fortunate for this, this town, then. Um <laughs> It doesn't seem like they're interested in that kind of fortune, though. As no. they're just murdering their own. Well, this is the thing. This is why I've been here for so long, healing up, because uh, I cannot leave. And if I did, they would probably put me on the stake for any magic use that I may have to heal myself. I uh, signed to Nino... Um... Uh, she can come with us if she wants. Mm. I no, I that that, that might be I something you uh, should explain. Uh, oh, uh, I mean, it'll happen organically, won't it? Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> So, Somebody else can explain it. How would I explain it anyways? He's a yeah, exactly. You can you can sign it, everyone. So I, I kinda nod back at Kamau and I, I look at the rest of my companions and say, Well, we don't have any objections to Varla joining us if you'd like to leave this place. <clears throat> oh, definitely. And, and for my part, I have a little bit of healing magic uh, if if we get on the road farther away from that here. Excellent. Hooray. There are two more people uh, also in the group. <clears throat> the first is uh, a woman in a peasant dress with a hood, and she always keeps the hood on. Mm. Uh, she has olive skin and dark curly hair. Uh, she's obviously poor. Her dress has been repaired multiple times, and she carries what amounts to a homemade sack over one shoulder that rattles and clangs as she walks. She has no weapons to speak of. Um, but if you ask or if, um, it comes up in conversation uh, because she won't uh, directly address you, at least not at this point, her name is Treva. She's a Vistiani. I think you're familiar with them. Well, that's kind of what I'm modeling my, my voice off of, my accent. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, but she lurks um, always, uh, or she seems to um, stay as far away from Asha, the um, Zorian lion, as far away from it as possible, and she's always behind everyone. Oh, okay. The other person, uh, his name is Wolfier. Sadly, uh, he was uh, not able to rejoin the group, oh. but... Um, he is, uh, he's a tall man, fairly thin, uh, not terribly attractive, not unattractive, um, but he seems quite average. His face is slender, and you think he might have uh, a little bit of elven blood in him. Mm. He's wearing um, some simple leather armor and carries a sword at his hip. Am I uglier than him with a 12 okay. that I just rolled? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> someone well, make up someone needs a makeup kit. Well, I guess I'm going to stop rolling our uh, taking seduction skills. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you don't like my brown tooth? <laughs> Your lucky uh, brown tooth. Yeah, <laughs> lucky because I pull it out and roll it with the dice. Oh, Fortunately for you, the minimum roll is a twenty, so you do get to re-roll that. Oh, even for oh, I would. I'm the GM that would keep make them keep that man. But thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, think, extra day twenty. Hey, if it was a twenty-one, you would have been stuck. That's fair. Okay, more middling. There we go. I appreciate you. Immediately, the brown tooth falls out, and a new tooth is replaced. <laughs> Oh God! I pick it up and inspect it. <laughs> it's a, it's just a fake tooth for, for show. <laughs> I smile and stick it in my pocket. <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> You're the one who invited her in the group. I floss. <laughs> uh. Okay. So. Wait, why did we come back? <clears throat> we went all the way out to the river and then we came back to New Haven. Is that is that what? Because we were we were trying to find uh, Lisa's house, make sure the the girl would be okay, and we that's when we found that it was on fire. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I gather they're already dead if we're not doing anything about them. Yeah, I would guess. Unless you guys want to go check out the flames. <laughs> Do we hear I screams? Thought, I thought that they fled. Or people said that they fled. I didn't remember. That's what I thought too. Maybe okay. they... I think I was under the impression that um, they fled and then the house got burned down because of potential curse. Right. I could, I could try and cast guess another time. Mm -hmm. Up to you. I could see if... If God would tell me. <laughs> um, 
Brian, your character is pretty much you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So um, because this has it's been a while, I'm more than happy to help if you are stuck. Uh, yeah. And it's it's been a thousand years. So um, go to your spells tab. And this is the reason I'm going through this. Um, for those of you uh, who have questions, please ask them. Yeah. Um, because three other people probably have the same question. You just don't know it. So to cast any spell, go to your spells tab. Uh, and if you want to see what the spells are, you can click on that little red button on the left-hand side, and that will open up the list. Hmm. If you want to know what the spells do, you can click on that cog on the right-hand side. Cool. Right. Uh, right. But to cast the spell, there's a couple of shadow dice that are sitting um underneath the name of the spell list like holy arms or exorcisms or communion etc Communion in this case right you double click those dice or drop the dice into the chat window and um unless you're trying to do something extra special like i want to cast a spell that's above my level um all spells only fail on a zero one or a zero two so the chances of failing a spell are very slim Okay. I am going to use Ness again, because I can do uh, one more spell, it looks like. I've got four uh, things. I've used two. So. Wow. With minimal I effort, your spell goes off. <laughs> Excellent. Communion. Uh, yes, this is a, a, a guess, which I have used... Uh, Three times. All, all things about a list. Uh, Lisa. Lisa. Uh, what does the group see when you cast your spell? That is a good question. Um, I think it is me with my holy symbol, uh, just kind of closing my eyes and asking God, okay, uh, uh, what... Uh, Best idea. Um, it's the choice. Uh, oh, I guess the, the question is, do we need to rescue Elise from the burning building? Yeah, okay. Tell us, Magic 8-Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it glows at all, but... <laughs> Uh, it could if you want it to, but every time someone casts a spell, you guys, I'm going to say, so what does the group see? Excellent. Yeah. Nice. So in this case, I, it's just, it's just it's, I think, you know what? My eyes would glow, but that's why I keep them closed. Aha. Uh -huh. Well done. Well done, cool. sir. We can see the light peeking out from your, your lids. <laughs> See, this is another reason why video is good because we can do all of our flourishes in ca on the camera. Ooh. <laughs> I can only do half of them. I've got a cat on my lap. <laughs> what does God say? Well, normally I would say. <laughs> All right. I, I believe Elise is not in is safe and not in the burning building. All right. And I say we head off. Um, I have a question. So when we met Varla, she was coming over, she was lurking, or was she was with the group? She was uh, with the group, but she was on the outer fringe of them, much the way um, Treva behaves with your group. Okay, mm. so Varla, have you gotten to know the townsfolk very well? Oh, that is a good question. <laughs> they they do not trust me, but they allow me to be amongst them while I was healing. Um, but mm. otherwise, I am definitely an outsider. Do you oh know why? Oh, go ahead. Go mm. ahead, Jenna. 
No, I was just going to ask, how long have you been here? Oh, uh, almost a year, I think it has been. A uh, winter, at least. Goodness gracious. Winter? So wasn't winter when the priest died? It just a bit before, actually. I met him. Uh, Bertie, I believe his name was. You met him? Oh, yes. He, he was, in fact, the one that talked the villagers into keeping me because I was so injured. I Otherwise, they Morgan. probably wouldn't have let me in. Yeah. How did oh. he die? How did he die? Uh, let yeah. me look and consult my notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, farmer. Uh, yes, if I wasn't if I wasn't specific enough, he stopped visiting you for um, about three days, and then um, the villager told you he had passed away. Right, and it was very sudden, I say. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I do not know, but I mean, he was the town's um, lay healer and very well versed in, in the, um, the applying of herbs. Herbs, you called it? Herbs. <laughs> Well, that's how I pronounce it. Oh, I will learn this. <laughs> but yes, uh, the the priest was laid to rest uh, in the church that he had helped build, um, oh. which is, of course, the core of the community. But the farmer that helped um, uh, said that he did not believe the priest rested quietly in death. Mm. Oh, no. Do you have access to the church? Um, no, except once I see you, and I, I kind of point at the the little one, I say, this one looks like she might be capable of getting inside a padlock. I kind of shrug, and I say, I tried. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> well, and again, if you already have tried, then, you know, a solid boot to the door might help. And I look at the, the I, larger people. I turn around and look at Kamal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I guess nobody I, asked me to boot it open before. No, we were trying to be polite to the church, but now that I've heard this information, I do want to go back and boot the door in. All right, All right. Let's I'm always, go. I'm always in for a good door booting. Let's go. Well, uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, the only reason why I'm uh, trying to say that we should maybe wait for darker times uh, when everyone is sleeping is because they are oh. very superstitious, very, very... Uh, tight knit community. So, unless you mm. like pitchforks in your ass, I I think mm. we should maybe wait and be a little, a uh, little quieter with the boot. I mean, <laughs> I've got this holy symbol that says I'm a knight of God. <laughs> Which one? Okay. No, I know, but I, I mean, for them, they they might not understand it. And I am on. A mission. I was asked specifically by my uh, venerable elder to in on Minister Holland. You know what, Sir Morgan? It might be better if we wait until nighttime. Like Var Varla right. says. I had to look up your name. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but in the meantime, we can ask her what she knows about the town and the people. Like she could fill us in point <laughs> action well <Wow>, you're talking <laughs> huh <laughs> I want to hit something <laughs> I, I'm still <laughs> oh I gotta find out if I trimmed enough the fact that Elise oh, yeah. isn't in the uh, house that is being burned down but they are losing all of their possessions like I kind of want to murder all of these townsfolk yes yes but that would be bad. Would it, would though? It though? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it would not be in uh, Minister Holland's... Uh, I don't think it's what he would want. I think you're right there. Six, seven, five, so, Varla, tell us more. Do you have anything else? Um, my memory is, is a little a sketchy. I'm still still injured. Um, How did you get injured? 
Oh, that is a long story, unfortunately. Um, but uh, suffice it to say that uh, I was ambushed by uh, a bunch of magically inept people. Magically inept. Mm. Uh, very stupid, superstitious people. Hmm. That caught I, me. I don't uh, look around the town. <laughs> yeah, that caught me healing, healing a little, a little bunny. I see. Oh. <clears throat> A little bunny? Oh, yes, a little bunny. Oh. Mm. Yeah, you're probably better off sticking with us. <laughs> well, I appreciate At least until the next town that, you know, I can maybe uh, settle so down. So how, clo how close are we to nightfall? <laughs> um, it's um, noonish right now, but um, I am fine pressing the fast forward button and... Um, and uh, we can go straight to nightfall. However, comma, uh, please uh, check your inventories and realize that this will mean another day of food is gone. Yeah, that was just crossing my mind as you were explaining the nightfall fast forward button. Um, is there anything around here that we can forage or fish for while we're waiting? There is a swamp and there is a uh, very verdant and lush forest. Mm. I um pull out my whistle and I uh and um I blow. It's not a sound that anybody else can hear, but Asha goes off into the forest um to hunt. Uh... Quite literally, bounds into the forest. Are things like foraging skills that we would need to apply here? Yep. I'm looking at my skill list right now. Oh, I've got contortions. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, nice. If someone uh, would like to make a foraging roll, then uh, you can try and hunt for food. And if anyone else would like to assist, then they can give a bonus to that roll if okay. they have foraging. Oh. How do you assist? Um, pick the person who you think is the best uh, has the best skill, and then whoever's assisting, the number of ranks that they have gets added to the roll. Ooh. I will assist. Okay. I I do not have foraging. I just have I minus 15. <laughs> minus 15? Yeah, oh. instead of minus 25, I have minus 15. If you oh guys are talking about hunting and gathering... I will mention that, um, oh, if you don't mind, I can definitely help you with that. I am I live off the land myself. That would be wonderful. <laughs> hey, could you can you learn skills from other players? Yes. Ooh. I had a player once, te or another character once teach one of my characters how to cast a spell he wanted. Nice. That's awesome. Oh. Well, you know, you've already been teaching somebody a new skill. Yeah. You taught a language. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. How to read lips. Oh, <laughs> it's been a while. Okay. Give me a break. <laughs> oh, Barla, that'd be wonderful. In fact, if uh, you don't mind me tagging along, I'd like to learn. Oh, not at all. In fact, uh, it's it's helpful with more eyes. Excellent. Okay. I sign that I'm going to come along. I will uh, aid. I'll uh, join too. Okay. It looks now like we're all going. All of you, uh, except for Treva and I believe Varla, have horses. What would you like to do with those? Uh, or, I mean, you've got you know twelve hundred pounds of meat right there. No, I was, yeah, no. Uh, no. I was just not yet. Say, it's an let, option. It's not off the table. But I, it's I, I don't know. So... Let, let me talk to them. Maybe there's one that's a little more tired than the rest. Oh. I, uh... I am not um, a foraging type. I'm a little bit crashy and loud, but I am a horse guy. I can look after the horses. Let the well, horses stay you... with the shiny man. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Thank Do you. Do the horses. whole uh, brush them down. Make sure they're fed. <laughs> nice. All right. We'll bring back extra for you. 
I would appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, extra, extra. You're like twice my height. Brava <laughs> mumbles quietly something about being very hungry, and uh, Wolfier confesses. He says, "Ah, I'm no good at looking for food in, out in the wild, but uh, why don't we go back to that uh, camping spot we had last night that was really good, and we can sit there until nightfall." Sounds good. We camped here. Though? Sure, yeah. We can, okay. uh, yeah. That's you true. did. I don't we know camp who made the roll, but somebody rolled like 250 to find a camping spot for, where no one would find them in the swamp. In the middle of the swamp. <laughs> That's impressive. It was. So five back. <laughs> okay. All right. It's time to forage. Okay. The camping uh, site where you guys were wasn't too far out of town, but. Um, because you have to go through a little bit of water to get there, um, it's reasonable to assume that the locals aren't going to come and look for you in that area. Okay. The swamp isn't more than two two or three feet thick um, or deep anywhere that you walk. It's reedy and tangled, but it is still fairly easy to walk through. And uh, at least it's not muddy. Great. All right. It's a small raised piece of land, um, big enough for everyone. There's reeds on all sides, so uh, you're not going to be seen. And uh, there's trees between you and the town. So if there are, uh, if you light a small fire like you did, no, you didn't light a fire last time, according to yeah. my notes, um, but you doubt anyone would see it at night. They wouldn't see the smoke and they wouldn't see the light. Okay. It's blocked by the by the reeds and okay, the trees. Spells. Okay. Spell. Hey, Phil, sorry. Um, back to the, I was just trying to recall last time when, when I tried to lockpick the padlock on the church doors. Mm -hmm. I seem to remember it was just plain impossible to do, was it not? Or did I actually attempt to do it and fail? You tried three times. Okay. Each, each time you try a skill, um, you can try and try and try because sometimes you just don't get it the first time. Right. Uh, you tried and you rolled really poorly. Okay. So then you tried again at minus 10 uh -huh. and you rolled really poorly. And then you tried again at minus 20 and you rolled really poorly. So you became cross at the lock uh -huh. and you tried again at minus 30 and you fumbled and you broke off one of your lock picks in the lock. Okay. That sounds like something I would do. <laughs> <laughs> And then you swore and said, it can't be picked. Okay. I I just remember being really frustrated and I can't remember if it's because I failed or it you we just couldn't pick it. So then even if I were to go back and try it, like that resets after some time if I don't break the lock. Yeah, like the next day or how does that work? Uh, the next time your lock picking skill goes up, that bonus goes back to zero. But does it does that reset after a rest? If when you rest, your lockpicking skill goes <laughs> up a level because you went up a level, then yes. Oh, shit. Oh. Really? Yep. Makes sense to me. So you can't just... You're not any better at it. And, you can't try and kick down that door and then try the next day because, you know, it didn't work yesterday. I'm sure it'll work today. But what if, like, you refreshed and you're in, in a better mental state? Uh, well, then... In theory, in that time, you've had enough time to think about what you did wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, you say to your fellow players, hey, somebody want to help me with this? Oh, okay. I'm still learning how all this works. So, okay, cool. That reminds me of a tiny rule change that I've decided okay. <clears throat> to implement. Uh -oh. And it hasn't really uh, kicked in specifically yet, but I'm going to bring it up because it might become relevant the next time you pick a lock. Mm -hmm. And that is, Rollmaster has very, very swingy dice. Um, so one of the optional rules in Rollmaster, and I didn't use it before, uh, and quite honestly, you didn't need it because you were just breezing through combats and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Is um, everyone has what's called one fate point you can re-roll nice. or make me re-roll any one dice that affects your character. So if I roll in combat, I just the, the dice go crazy and I roll 300. It's something that's just going to slice your character in half. 
you All say, right. I'm going to use my one fate point to make you reroll that. And hopefully I won't roll 300 again. Or you try and jump the cliff because you have to or you're going to die. This might give you a second try at it, even if the chances are really low. It's any time you want one dice roll to be rerolled, you can, and then it's gone. For you will the entire get a, campaign. You will get one more fate point when this portion of the adventure is done. Nice. That's kind of cool. So every, I'll call it every chapter, you get one dice that you can use to reroll. Okay. Sweet. And if you want to use it to reroll in a lock picking roll, that's great. If you want to re make me reroll something that's really bad for you, that's great too. Oh, okay. And so I, I assume we can't bank these fate points. So like, if you, we don't use it, absolutely, you can. Oh, really? Oh. Okay. Um, Carry over, like it. Yeah. So we already have like five, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you spent all five. Oh. What? <laughs> it's like the GM knows your crafty ways. Whatever. Damn it. <laughs> um, so for anyone who really cares about these things, um, you can add uh, a note on the notes tab of your character, uh -huh. or you can add a new type of currency on your inventory page. However you want to keep track of your fate point total. Um I'm just trusting people to be honest about it because I'm not going to remember every time you use a fate point. Um, but yeah, everybody has exactly one. Okay. I've added mine to my inventory. Yay. That's kind of cool. You mm -hmm. swing your holy sword and you fumble and it breaks. Mm, might want to reroll that. Okay. Yeah. But back to the lock on the church. Um, Yes. Uh, it's busted. You tried and tried and tried, and you can continue to try. Your next try, I think, would be at minus 40. Oh, God, no. But the, not minus, a, minus 40 to what? To for my lock, lock picking, picking skill. Lock picking? I know, but no. what is your skill? It used to be... So, okay, my pick lock skill on my sheet, it says that it's plus 40. See, you would be just zero, right? Well... It, well, right now, does that mean that, like, right now, anytime I try to pick a new lock, I'm actually rolling at plus 10? No, it's just this lock. That project. Okay. 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 Cool. <clears throat> I, I'm, and I'm I believe lock. your um, lock pick set yeah. um, gives Give you a plus 25 pick. bonus, but you've broken one pick, so now it's only a plus 20 bonus. Okay. Ouch. And so I don't... she has plus 20 to lock pick still. And I don't know if the GM does use it or not, and this is helpful if he does, but lighting will give you a bonus. Oh, um, oh. If you have lock lore, which is a technical lore skill, oh. if you look at that, uh, that might give you a bonus. Um, I'll throw some numbers out just in case you do use it. But Damn, I've only got general lore. I am regional. Okay. Neato. Okay. Mm -hmm. Locks, known description. Holy crap, this is really granular. <laughs> well, it can be as granular it. as you want. I do a lot of this stuff in the background. Exactly, and that's what I mean. Like, it, you might not have to press these buttons. If you want to look at them all, they're under the uh, plus minus button on the far right. On the far right? You just elevated our game. Like There you like... go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank like... you. And it's got a search function, so just type in pick. <laughs> awesome. Yes, picking a lock in a a dark and dingy dungeon uh, cellar under candlelight is really really hard. But right. uh, picking a lock under a a bright sunny day, mm -hmm. heck of a lot easier. Okay, all right, that's cool. So we're gonna have to bring a light source or something to our pick locking party, or I can just have the pally look at it while he's casting a spell. <laughs> <laughs> hey Morgan, yeah. check this out. <laughs> Love it. Am I okay. correct in ass assuming? Uh, and if anyone has got something different, please correct me. Um, I I really try not to step on people or miss people. But am I correct in assuming that um, Morgan, Treva, and Wolfier are going to go and 
set up camp while Iko, Nino, and uh, Varla are going to try and dig up some food. Yes. Uh, Kamau is going for food as well. Yeah. Okay. And um, theoretically, Asha will come back with meat. Uh, she doesn't feed you. She feeds herself. No, no. <laughs> I think that she can feed us both. <laughs> Are you talking about the horses again? <laughs> no! Oh. Dang it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm half Croatian. Uh. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. <laughs> what do you mean, no, I'm not? <laughs> Um, I'll be who, the judge of who would like to make the foraging roll? I, I want them to make the foraging roll and I'll help them because that way it'll be more of me assisting kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, fine. I'll do it then. Can I make the roll without having foraging though? Would I just roll a... You would roll a D100 or an open-ended D100. You okay. would add whatever your skill bonus is, whether it's plus 50 or minus 50. Okay. And then... um. The first, the first two people add their full ranks uh, of foraging to your roll. So if they've got five ranks each, that'd be a total of plus ten. The next two people add half their ranks, and so on. I see. Okay. Um, so I'm. I'll do an open-ended roll, but I don't have. I might as well do it then. I have some skill. <clears throat> so what I. Uh Am I just making a an open roll then? Uh, Kam I well, you talk to Kamal because uh, Kamal just said that he'll do it. Oh, sorry. Wait, you have four ranks. Why don't shouldn't you be foraging? Well, that's what I mean. I'm just a newcomer I'm to helping. the group, so I'm helping you guys versus sorry. taking over. Helping. That and okay. letting you guys roll the dice because it's fun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got it. What am I getting bonuses from? Well, you're getting a plus four from Varla, so you can add in that little uh, modifier, modifier box. in the bottom left, you can put in a plus four. Awesome. And anybody else who has ranks? No ranks. I have no ranks. You get plus four. Oh. <laughs> big money. No big food money. for you. Maybe I no. will roll next time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's not that um, there's not food to be found. Oh, I'm going to use my fate point. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. No, no. no. <laughs> joking, joking. <laughs> Every, everything is just so wet. Um, there's a lot of... Um, Should be able to find some mushrooms. Uh, there's just a lot of things that just are not edible. Even the mold is moldy. <laughs> We're not like mushrooms. <laughs> All mushrooms are edible at least once, right? That's true. Yeah, That's true. Exactly. Everything. <laughs> everything's edible. You see, Varla slap things out of your guys' hands as you guys start talking about the mushrooms. <laughs> no, <It's> delicious. <laughs> yeah, not this one. <laughs> Varla just takes their stuff when they're dead <laughs> and wanders back to the village to heal. <laughs> A Nino move. <laughs> Right. The, well, sadly, the triumphant uh, hunters are less than triumphant. Mm -hmm. um, they return empty-handed, and uh, Treva looks extremely disappointed. <laughs> while, while I'm back at camp, uh, can I attempt to train the horses to um, basically stay? Is my horse is slightly trained already. Indeed, it is. Uh, yeah, and and so I'd like to these other, you know, wild animals. If I'm going to be traveling with them, it might be a good idea if their horses kind of follow my horse's lead. I think that's an excellent idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, that is what I'm going to try doing. I have this animal training skill. You've got plenty of time, so that's not an issue. This is a very simple command to try and train a horse to do. Uh, mm -hmm. So you get plus 10 to do it. And it's a herd animal. You get another plus 10 to do it. Oops. So in the modifiers in the bottom left, put a 20. All right. 
and then if you would uh, roll your animal handling skill, which I believe is specialized in horse, if I remember correctly. It, it is well. I have animal training. Um, it is specialized, I think. I yeah, it, ha- it, it has to be specialized, and I assume with you okay. it would be horse. So. Yeah, it definitely is. All right, but I don't know if I added anything to that, so it's just a one rank and plus five. Uh, right. Training is um, not a, it's not a thing you do in one round or, or one hour. It takes time. So you've got enough time to make one try on one person's horse. Whose horse would you like to train? Uh, I think Nino's. Okay. Hey. Chosen at random. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Oh. The horse what? absolutely does not want to work with you. Wow. It's probably wow. the rain, um, but you cannot try and train this horse again until you've gained right. one rank in the skill. Ooh, it, it went that badly. It might be that it's because I am such a large person and Nino is not. So this horse does not trust large people. Undoubtedly, that's what, what it was. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Might it might be you're a lot shinier than I am, too. And yep. you're a lot cleaner than I am. <laughs> In my culture, it is a poor musician that blames his instrument. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. Everybody, uh, since a full day has passed, everybody mark off one more day of food then. Oh, so question, GM, in terms of me being in this uh, village for the, the winter, or however long, would I have my own place with a little bit of provisions that I can maybe go back and just sneak sneak some for them? Um, I think that's reasonable. Um, wow, I'm actually going to use a, a D&D dice. Oh, no, I... percentage. Come on, this is Roll Master. Roll a d6, and that'll be the number of days of food you have back there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Oh. Oh. I can supply the party with food. That's enough food for everybody for one day. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. And the two NPCs starve. Well, I will use sustain self for myself then. I'll cast that over the two days and not not eat regularly you guys will see a a silvery green radiance uh, that that'll appear before me and then almost like a star trek gas cloud uh, enemy it'll move towards me and make me glow for a second that only happens if you roll roll a successful spell cast and that is true let me do that now add two of them for the two days if you would like (laughs) one I it I just need one per day. Oh yeah, exactly. One and two. So yep, you're good for today. And the previous. There you go. Is that a self only spell? Uh self only, yeah. I, I need to develop it next level and then I've got water and food production that I can cast to help everybody. Oh. Okay. I watch the green clouds with wide eyes. <laughs> As it attacks me and I writhe. No. Like a wolf. <laughs> Would have expected a different result. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The cloud cover at night is thin. It's um, the rain is on and off all day, um, but it's easy enough to travel by the light of the moon that peeks through uh, fairly constantly to find your way back to the center of town if that's where you'd like to go. Okay. Mm. I kind of elbow the pally and I say, "So, are we doing this?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's break into a church. <laughs> All right. I kind of look around the room. Hey, you guys ready to go? Uh, Let's go. Treva says, I will wait here. And if uh, Wolfier will stay with me, we will be safe with horses. Yes. <clears throat> okay. You guys watch it. Watch after the animals. We're going to go break some stuff. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. They will stay and uh, make sure nothing gets stolen or dragged away by alligators. 
Nice. <laughs> Dragged away by alligators. <laughs> All right. All right. So, let's see. We've got. I give and... uh, Asha the um, the uh, command to uh, to protect, and uh, she'll stay at the camp on the outskirts, since I know Trava doesn't really want to uh, be around her. That is very, very true. For those of you who haven't uh, used uh, Fantasy Grounds in a while, Mm -hmm. if you uh, ever want to see the map, just double click on the uh, portrait of your character, and that should automatically open whatever map your character is on. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Hang on. Hang on. I don't know. It's just making my dice glow. Yeah, same these. I, I mean, feel like we're not on a map. <laughs> nope, you are. Are we? We are? Yeah. It should, but okay, well, here. Let me share it. Oh, maybe it's because my map was already open. But we yeah. popped on the map. Yeah, there I am. Yeah. Weird. Okay. It works with every other uh, every other game I've been on. I don't know why it doesn't now. But it looks like one of you is not here, and it looks like it's Varla. Varla, do you have the map? She's, she's there. there. I, I see Varla. I see no, but Varla. I. it doesn't look like he's got the map. Oh. 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 I'm going to grab oh. water real quick. You won't be able to hear me, but I can hear you. Yep. Well, that sounds like a great idea. I'd do that too, but there's a cat on my lap. <laughs> Aw. Is that her? Sounds like a, a hefty penalty to all actions. It truly is. She's here because the kitten uh, won't attack her. Or <laughs> I'll defend her from the kitten. <laughs> nice. Matt, are you there? Yes, sir. Can you see the map? I can, yeah. Oh, okay. For some reason, it doesn't look to me like you can actually see it, but as long as you can, that's totally fine. Oh, weird. Um, the square is empty, the buildings are dark, and the doors are closed. Um, the pyre has been uh, restocked with wood. The bodies that you left there in the square are gone. Uh, the hand cart that has the spears on it um, is sitting in the rain, and it doesn't look like it's moved since you were here two days ago. Um, there's a wagon that was full of uh, crates and sacks, and to save me from trying to eliminate those, we're going to pretend that that uh, wagon is now empty. Damn. <laughs> All right. And directly in front of you is a church, one story tall. It has a slate roof. Um, The walls are not painted, um, but they're even and straight with uh, the building looks like it's well maintained. The stores leading up, the stairs leading up to the two double doors on the front. Um, The stairs look like they've been replaced recently. Uh, And the two, two doors leading into the church are, are um, I can't even think of the word, sturdy. Sorry about that. They have two large handles, and although there's no lock built into the doors themselves, a thick chain with a heavy padlock is wrapped around the handles. Are there any light sources around? Like torches that aren't lit or anything like that? No, there are not. I'm assuming everyone can see uh, reasonably well, if not very well, because the moon is shining through. Okay. But the only sound that you can hear is the wind in the trees and the rain pattering on the ground. The last time you were here was, I believe, when you saved the young girl from the being burnt on the pyre. Yes. And you were attacked by what I'll what I will affectionately call witch hunters. Okay. Shall we move towards the church? We shall. This is a good idea. <laughs> do, 
do 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 Does this lock look like something I can just break off? Um, no, it's it's fairly heavy, but um, you think that if you spend some time with it and you're not afraid to make noise, um, you have an axe, correct? I have an axe. I also have a pole axe. Removing the handles that the chain is wrapped through does not look like, like it would be a, a terribly difficult thing to do. <clears throat> okay. Does anyone have a crowbar? There's spears over there. You know what? You would think that somebody like me would be equipped with a crowbar. <laughs> they are heavy. <laughs> I was going to say, you watch those, how heavy those are? <laughs> yeah. What about a little crowbar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a hobbit crowbar. <laughs> you know, any long pole can be a crowbar if you use it properly. Yeah, That's true. This is a lot of leverage. There's All pieces right. of wood, there's spears. I'm going to go skulk around and see if there's anything long and sturdy we can use to pry these handles off. I feel like my um, pole axe of returning should uh, be the trick for that. Don't break it. Yeah, strength roll. Uh, yeah. I'll give it a go. This is me skulking. <laughs> Are you putting your head and arms into the stock and, and waving for the camera? Yeah. <laughs> Rank yeah. roll, eh? All right. No, no. Um, I'm sorry. Um... If you would, I'm going to have you re-roll that. Um, this would be a light maneuver. Okay. Not terribly difficult at all. Okay, so, click, so click the light. light button. And then... Um, and then re-roll. And then re-roll. <laughs> well, nice. Something. There we go. <laughs> Uh, you yank and pull. There's a, a slight cracking of wood, and one of the handles comes out of the door uh, fairly easily. Sweet. I guess we only had to remove one of them. Yeah. Yep. The chain falls to the side, still wrapped around the other handle. I'm going to try and grab for that chain. Oh, I'm way back there. Never mind. Yep. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Move your token, Matt. <laughs> You are free to open the door if you wish. Uh, oh, I wish. Okay. Uh, the door opens with a slight creak, and there's no one. No one seems to be around. And again, you don't even see a light, so you think that no one is watching what it is that you're doing. Inside, the floors are polished wood. Uh, there's a, a small cloakroom. Uh, immediately upon entering with pegs. The pegs are all empty. And you see a long row of pews that lead all the way down uh, to the end of the church with a pulpit at the far end. Hmm. Large stained glass windows are on either side, one side looking out to the graveyard and the other side looking out to in, into the forest. If I look the church around, is fair, oh, sorry, fairly nondescript, mm -hmm. uh, but there is a large, large wooden effigy at the far end. Um, it's easily as tall as the tallest of you, but it's mounted on the wall, um, and it's not decorated in any way, but it's in the shape of a circle with a lightning bolt running through it. I recognize that. Yeah, it's a fairly common symbol, especially for someone like you. Uh, you know, it's a uh, a dedication specifically to uh, the equivalent of, he'd be like Odin or Zeus. He's the king of the gods. And his symbol is, is the lightning bolt. I'll say a silent prayer. Okay. Um, if I look around outside the church, can I spot an area where I can easily hide and kind of keep watch for anybody approaching the church? 
Um, the grass in the graveyard is not well tended, uh, and there's plenty of spaces in there to hide. Or All you right. can hide behind um, the grave markers. They're not grave stones, they're just grave markers. They're, they don't have any names or uh, any specifics on them at all. Gotcha. All right. So I'm going to, I guess, I'll post up right here and just keep an eye out and keep my ears open for anyone who approaches. <laughs> Sounds good. Assuming right, that everyone... I... Go ahead. I would like to enter the, the church, start walking up to well, the... It's... It's nice to finally be in a place where there's no rain. Mm -hmm. You've grown up in churches your entire life, so you're quite comfortable here. You walk down, and I don't have a map of the interior of the building. Um, oh. But you, you walk down to the area where the pulpit, it's a slightly raised area. And off to one side is a metal cover. The floor creaks slightly as you walk through. Um, the metal cover is an effigy, and uh, it shows a man lying in repose. This is probably... It, it's flush with the floor, and it looks like it's been permanently set into the wooden floor. Oh. Well, this is As... likely the minister. Varla, if you approach and you see it as well, it has a vague resemblance uh, to the man you knew as Brother Bertie. Oh. I'm just looking at the inside. I should lift this in order to see if Minister Holland is at rest. Uh, You're going to lift a gravestone? Is that what it is? The gravestone, right? Um, cover, it looks like. Morgan, could you give me a perception roll, please? Ooh. Uh, the, uh, the skill? Uh, yes. Be in alphabetical order. There it is. Got it. It's somewhat hidden, but there is a very small keyhole to one side of the metal plate. Oh. If you had a key, you might be able to open it without breaking it. There looks to be a keyhole here. We should get um, Nino to look at this. All right. That's a good idea. Uh, I'm going to look around for a key while somebody else goes get Nino from outside. I can okay. do that. Okay. Uh, Morgan, could you give me another perception roll, but this one in the dice tower, please? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why did I go back to main instead? All right. Uh, over the what? dice tower. Oh, the keyhole? If it makes your life any better, um, along the bottom of everyone's interface, there are gray boxes labeled 1 through 12, or at least there are 12, 12 of them to me. Yep. Uh, for commonly used skills, you can drag the skill name down into those boxes, and that's just mm. a shortcut, so you don't have to always go digging for things that you constantly use. Cool. never thought of that. I, I generally cool. keep my perception skill there because it's used so often. Yeah. That is a good idea. I used those a ton when I was running that one game. They're awesome. Hey, I so use them as the GM. Use them as the GM. Yeah, in my uh, in one of my other games, I drag down the, the chapter we're in, and yeah, there's a couple of common tables like the the uh, crit and uh, ale tables. I keep them there because I love using them. Yeah. I find they're great for maps too. Yep. Um, so uh, I hear there's a keyhole. Hello. Sorry, I'm typing. <laughs> <laughs> I show her where it is. Ah, oh, keyhole. 
Okay. Uh, the keyhole is fairly small, and it's set into the floor. Uh, because it's difficult to get any kind of a tool in there of any kind, it's minus 20 if you do want to try and pick it. Holy crap. Okay. Guys, did you hear that? What? Did you hear that thump? The thing the GM just typed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. What? What? There's something under the floor. What? Oh. Can I roll oh, perception? Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you wish to roll a perception, please put it in the dice tower. Dice tower. Nice. Okay. And then how do I do this? The modifier, I do minus 20. So in the modifier, in the bottom left corner of your screen, it's a little white skull with a yep. gray something on it. Uh -huh. um, minus, put minus 20 in there. Okay. There we go. And then I just drag over my pick locks dice, yes? Double click on them or drag them into chat, whatever works better for you. There we go. Nice. Oh! Oh! Unlike that crafty and well-made lock on the front door, <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculously simple. I um, look at it and open. But as the lock clicks, uh -oh. you hear a thump from oh, underneath no. you. That, that noise. Okay. I look up at Morgan and I go, are you ready for this? Morgan. Morgan. Der Morgan. He's got Z's on his name. I don't I think he's been there for a while. Sleeping. I think he's dealing with kitties. I think so, too. Might be a catastrophe without him. Oh. Wah. Oh, God. Oh, it hurts us. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> just a sec. Oh, I think he's having problems. He just muted and unmuted. We still can't hear you. Um, my issue with Discord is usually the inputs um, default back to default, and I have to change them back to whatever it is I want to use. Like my headphones, if that helps. Oh. Like that... in the middle of the game yeah, that happened? Yeah, that's happened to me before. Yeah. yeah. That's odd. That and sometimes you can just disconnect and then reconnect. And that'll... Yep. Yeah, that's happened before for sure. Yeah. The... Oh. What do you say? His okay. headset just switched off. Uh-huh. Sounds like he ran out of battery. <laughs> One rank of magic. Yeah, I like things with plugs. <laughs> wow, it just gets to the good part and then his episode. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> he did it on purpose. <laughs> Doing his best Kamau impression. He is paralyzed <laughs> with fear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That? Is that Lee Paladin? Is that you? Can you hear me now? We yes. Yes. No, no, we can't. Right. Welcome yeah. back. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, yeah, so I was just in the midst of saying, uh, I get my sword and board in it and I'm ready for this. Okay. I hop the good, back. The I good stay. news is, Sir Morgan has returned, but sadly, he did not find a key hanging on any pegs or in any of the places that he looked. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Um, I have well, my quarter staff ready. It turns out you don't need a key when you've got me. And I hop back. <laughs> like... <laughs> I... That was actually impressive, little one. <laughs> I kind of smirk and nod. <laughs> okay, there. And I clear the area. I'm like, I don't know what that knocking is, but I'll let you find out. The cover looks fairly robust and heavy. It will definitely take at least one of you uh, to make a, a concerted effort to lift it and open it. Well, I'll free up the heavy fighter types to keep their weapons. I'll, I'll help and do that then. I don't know what you're talking about. That's a 
terrible plan, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get around the other side of Ico. Yeah. And I'll uh, try and heave it off. Or at All least right. slide it off and be gentle with it. Um, it opens like on a hinge. Okay. I was going to say, did I roll that? That's my dice. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's an easy roll, so uh, you have very little problem displaying your great strength. And I, uh, I do look almost as buff as the knight, the paladin. Mm -hmm. I look impressed at her. <laughs> Yeah, I feel you're, you're pretty impressive yourself, Farla. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> With only the slightest groan of metal, it opens up, and beneath you see an earthen pit. Inside of the pit is a wooden coffin. Oh. The oh. coffin looks like it's been there uh, not too terribly long. The wood looks fairly new, but it does it is sealed. As the door opens and makes the slight groan, the coffin shakes slightly, and there are two more thumps from within. Okay. <clears throat> oh boy. Your lead, Sir Morgan. Um. All right. We should <laughs> open the coffin. Oh, that means me again. <laughs> I believe so. <sighs> Uh, I've got not... my sword and board ready. <laughs> I do not wish to be as helpful as I was. Um, perhaps someone else should do it. No, I'll I'll go and do it. Um, again, I'll I'll go around it so that I'm opposite to the party, and then when I open it, I'll try and open it uh, away from me and towards facing them. us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Actually, hang on. Let me make a reasoning roll. My character is not that smart. Oh. Oh, I am that smart. Okay, so that's what I'll do. Smarty Barla. <laughs> yeah, my zero. Uh, reaching down, you tug on the lid, but it has been nailed, s closed with spikes. Oh, oh, interesting. I will knock on the on the thing and see if the person repeats it, and I'll whisper, "Repeat this knock if you can understand." <laughs> <laughs> and Blink I make twice, the most. You're in danger. Yeah, I make the most radical knock that could not be repeated <laughs> um there are um two thumps from within okay that's good there's definitely me. something underneath the lid right and it's it, it seems to be reacting to the noise you're making right and that still doesn't tell us if it's you know an intelligent person or an undead person. probably nocturnal yeah exactly so i say oh. Um, where was the little one with her little baby crowbar? <laughs> Me? <laughs> I, oh, yes, a Nino. Um, would I be able to pry the spikes out? Um, do you have any kind of uh, tools mm -hmm. that would involve carpentry or construction? Mm -hmm. Or an I axe, see. or a crowbar, yeah, or nice. some kind of a tool of destruction. Um, I have a grappling hook. And... Oh. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see. I don't, but maybe. And I look over at Kamau. I said, maybe you could take the side of your axe and pry this lid open, like stick it in there sideways, and I'll hop on it. Actually, wait, 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 wait. There was, I believe, some tools that if Nino could, you know, use her abilities again, uh, she might be able to actually uh, retrieve one. Like a crowbar or some kind of... I could retrieve one? Yes, the, the village might... I, oh, right, I, right, right. I just have to remember if the village has one or not, uh, GM. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, those... <laughs> Those piles and, that were down by the sub, the storage buildings, would I be able to rummage through there and find something? Absolutely. There's plenty of tools and no no doors are locked well, in this building oh, in this village. Here we go. Okay, I'm down Except here. Except for the church. Okay. Except for so, the church. Just make sure that you, you are uh, as quick and quiet as you can be. Okay. I I like 
the loot <laughs> and nod. <laughs> and then I, I sneak down as quickly and quietly as I possibly can. Do you want me to roll anything? I don't. Uh, just be aware that you're uh, making sloshy, yucky, muddy noises and uh, tracks to and from the church as you go. Excellent. <laughs> all right, because it's all mud and I don't see any other path that I can take. Um, um, not in this area. Okay. Walking through the center of town here, if you want to call it a town, walking through this t uh, village square, um, this receives the highest traffic of any area um, and it's it's been raining for so long, you're next to a swamp um, that everything is waterlogged and every step is uh, clearly identifiable. All right. So what I'm going to do is, as quickly as I can, I'm going to... I'm not going to make what? a straight line down to the to the tools. I'm going to mm -hmm. run all around the area and outside the wall. You know what I mean? I'm going to just sort well, of... Well, you, you also realize that there are um, a great deal of muddy boot prints that lead up the steps and into the church. Right. So part of the idea is to hide those as well, not just my own tracks. Um, would you like to give me a tracking roll? Let's see if I can. I can. Actually, would it be tracking or would it be... Um, yeah, we'll go with tracking. Would it be tracking? Hmm. We'll go with that for now. Okay. Uh, you do a reasonable job of uh, at least... It's obvious that someone has been here, but not who or how many. Okay. And you come back in short order with a crowbar. All right. Short-ish order, I guess. Is that a crack at her height? <laughs> Probably. Okay, so I have a crowbar or pry bar. And do you want me to roll to see if I can dislodge this thing? Yep. Uh, with with the handy tool of a crowbar in hand, this will be a routine maneuver. So okay. click on routine in the blue boxes okay. and uh, give me a strength roll. Way to go. Right. And that is on my main page. Here we go. Oh! You oh, drop no. the crowbar between the coffin and the dirt wall, and you can't reach it. No! Are you can serious? I, can I reach it? <laughs> sure. With my longer arms? <laughs> sure you can. <laughs> For people's problems. Wait, do I have to roll? No, you can reach it. <laughs> Am Here I going that short? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You little um, Popeye baby. So arms. Should I uh, try again, or does anyone else with bigger biceps want to get this? I'll uh, I'll move forward and uh, I'll do it. Okay. All right. I. Uh, sorry. Whoop. No, I was just gonna say I I pass the crowbar to Kamel. Uh, sorry. I get a bonus for using the crowbar instead of just. Uh... Yeah, it's a routine maneuver. Routine, that's what so it is. Click on that go. fancy yep. routine button and uh, give me Perfect a strength roll. I got this. Yeah, what's that? I don't know. Totally. You don't know why Nino had any he kind is. of problem with this at all. <laughs> <laughs> I side eye her. <laughs> I shake my head. <laughs> As you put the crowbar in um, and you begin to pry the lid open, um, there is not violent, but um, oh movement from inside, bumping and thumping. Mm -hmm. And if you, uh, you, you pause for a moment as you're opening the lid and the movement doesn't stop but it settles down. Well, I'm expecting a fight as soon as I open this thing. Okay. Um, you lift open the lid, and you do indeed see 
a body inside. What's Varla, the body you, doing? <laughs> you recognize um, the body. It's fairly decomposed, uh, and it's it smells absolutely terrible. But it's wearing the Franciscan friar brown robe that uh, Brother Bertie wore when he tended to you. Oh. Um, but his face is marked with small, hard, white, raisin-like growths oh. on his face. His mouth is frozen open, and as the lid comes off, um, it doesn't try and sit up. It it um, it doesn't seem to know what to do, and it it thrashes more towards the edges of the coffin than at the lid. Lid. Yep. Hmm. You lift Wait. the lid off, and unless anyone wants to do something different, after a few moments. Hold on. The it, the thumping's coming from the lid, not the underneath the coffin. No, it's coming from the body. The body was knocking on the lid. Yeah. And what's the body doing right now? It tries to sit up in a very clumsy like fashion. I'm gonna oh. talk um, and be like Brother Bertie. Coming back up. <laughs> yeah. Brother I feel Bertie. Like, uh, removing the head might be the way to go. Um Everyone, uh, specifically um, Varla and Sir Morgan, but everyone is aware of what's called the Blessing of Phaon, the God of the Sun. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, undead cannot be under... Um, if they enter sunlight, they are destroyed. So dragging the body into the sunlight will bring it a final death. It okay. is uh, moonlight, though. It is, so that's not going to work right now. But if you, you know, hold on to it for the next eight or ten hours, you'll be great. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> let's sing right. some fire songs for a bit. <laughs> let's uh, let's slam the lid back down shut. Okay. okay. And sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> All of us. Well, re, re nail it. <laughs> okay. Is that um, the only way to un unalive this thing? Sir Morgan, you have never seen undead before, but you've obviously been trained to fight them. You've heard many stories. And the reaction that you would expect from from um, an animated body that has risen, that isn't resting quietly, is either murder, uh, murderous intent of some kind, or outright berserk. But... And this is um, not that. This is not that. So this is this is not what you were expecting. Right. So they're not undead? No, no, it's undead. It's just okay. Sir Morgan is specifically is surprised at the at what he was taught. It does not seem to be um consistent. Consistent with what this thing is doing. But um is if Whatever it is that you do want to do, it, uh, it it tries to sit up, and I uh, it 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 struggles to figure out how its legs work, and it mechanically tries to stand. Does anyone know uh, talk to undead? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, no. undead lore. Yeah, anything like that. <laughs> I don't it uh, it begins walking towards the end of the casket, and it bumps into the uh, the end oh. of the hole in the floor. How big is so this? So it thing? begins it begins walking towards the other end, and it bumps into the floors at the other end as well. Uh, and it's only bumping into it up to about its waist. Oh, okay. I mean, instead of putting it back in the coffin and taking the coffin uh, and finding, we could just weaken the burning this thing. Hey. Um. Yeah. Anyone have an extra T-shirt? It. Uh. It begins reaching for you, Sir Morgan. Oh gosh. It put. It extends its arms, um, somewhat mechanically, somewhat unsure. 
and it reaches for you and it puts its hands on the floors like it's trying to pull itself out of the uh out of the coffin in the ground and its arms and hands are also spotted with these small raisin like hard white don't touch him okay but this- <laughs> i i am going to give him give him a kick in the chest to kind of knock him back into the coffin um, I will not even make you roll for that because that's simple enough. Um, he will if, if you hit him, he will he will fall over. Yes. Do you do you need to write something to Varla? No. Okay. I thought that she was rolling the lore for for you. Uh, if he, oh he. Yep. It was just in passing when I mentioned it. If mm-hmm. everybody wanted to roll it, if they had it. I don't um, I'm sorry to say, I would like you to roll that in the dice tower, please. Yeah, oh. no problem. And tell me what it is that you would like to know. And thank you for pointing that out, by the way. Mainly I totally the, missed it. the nodules as well, um, if that's a normal thing. But basically, what kind of undead in terms of class, if that's available. Yeah, you're going through a lot of effort to describe these nodules, so I'm very concerned. (laughs) Contagious. Mm -hmm. And sorry, I didn't press a difficulty for you. No, it's okay. Remember, without glory, it's just a hole. Oh. <laughs> ouch, ouch. User has left chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I uh, before we attack it if if that's going to be something eventually. I'll just mention that out loud. I say, you know the I have encountered undead in the past, uh, as my accent changes. Um, <laughs> uh, but th- uh, this is the most different. Yeah, I, I don't even have the accent anymore. Anyway, I, I tell the group it's basic undead, but its behavior is odd. It's definitely not acting normal. Hmm. So as it tries to write itself and once again tries to pull itself from the hole. I almost think, oh God, I've definitely switched accents. I almost think we should uh, let it go. Um, let it go and follow it. Follow it? Oh. Well, this is the thing. I, I have seen day walking undead recently, and they were mm-hmm. they were moving, uh, what was it, towards GM, something? towards a lake or a river? Oh. oh. Are you asking me? Yeah. You didn't see them. You heard about somebody who says they saw them. Okay. And it was walking uh, along the riverbank, upriver. Riverbank, upriver. Okay, so that's what I tell them. Let's do it. Okay. You think we should follow? Well, uh, that is that is it. I, I do not know. It, all right. It doesn't seem to be terribly violent. Let's that... be ready to attack if we need to. We can follow right. behind. Okay. It's, this sounds like a good plan because this doesn't follow anything I've learned about undead. <clears throat> All right then. Follow the body the of too. of poor brother Birdie uh, alternates between uh, reaching for people and uh, trying to figure out how to get itself out of this terrible trap that it's fallen into. I wouldn't touch it though. No. So, <laughs> don't help it, them that is way. Is the coffin lid on hinges? Like, can we can we make a sort of a ramp for Brother Birdie? Oh. It's or not on Birdie. hinges, um, but you could probably make a ramp if you put because you've com- you've completely lifted the lid off. Right. Nice. Um, if you wish, you could uh, make a ramp at the shallow end of the hole. Okay. Um, so I I suggest yeah. that. Somebody who's got um, strength higher than mine. <laughs> maybe maybe we could make a ramp for former Brother Birdie. <laughs> That's a great idea. 
at the shallow end of the hole. <laughs> and do we have Maybe. quarter staffs to at least hurt it? And... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. I got a spear I can hurt it with. Oh. <laughs> Short. Short and board. <laughs> All right. All right. I've got a short bow. All right. Or is this an easy thing? Do I get to do a... Is it a routine? Uh, no need to even roll. Uh, you just place the ramp, and it doesn't immediately move to it. Uh, it flounders about even more uh, for uh, a few seconds before it makes its way towards where the ramp is. And it takes it five or ten seconds, but it, it figures out what the ramp uh, can do for it, and it begins crawling out on its hands and knees. Sweet. Okay. Once it's at the top um, and out of the hole, it stands up, completely ignoring all of you, and begins shuffling down the aisle between the pews. I look at Barla, give her a thumbs up. <laughs> and um, it it moves slowly, but it moves to the uh, to the door and tumbles down the stairs. Okay. Falls into the mud. Hmm. It picks itself up. Excellent. <laughs> Um, and it doesn't seem to be looking in any particular direction, uh, but it walks between the two buildings, um, north, south, to the east. Here? Yep. Where, where Marlo is, where Ico is, and begins, uh, slowly shuffling and shambling through the forest. Okay. Shuffling and shambling. And I ask just anybody who's listening, any idea how much time before the sun rises? Or can I tell? Everybody has a skill called weather watching. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is still, um, the night has just begun. Okay, okay, perfect. <clears throat> Alrighty. As it yeah, shuffles... Um, it pays absolutely no attention to uh, any of you, and it's not walking in a straight line. It uh, it bumps into trees. It walks around the tree. It vaguely seems to be heading in one particular direction, but it's taking its own sweet time. No rush at all to get there. Okay. It takes um, about 20 minutes just to get out of this immediate area, and in another hour, it's reached a farm where it begins just walking through the crops, um, heading towards a farmhouse. The farmhouse has smoke coming out of it, but there are no lights in the windows. Oh. As it shuffles through the crops, past the barn, past the house... It continues off uh, towards the rear end of the property where it reaches the river and it begins following the river. In terms of region, you mentioned swamps, swampy? Yes. Um, what is in that direction, if I can roll that? I made my region lore for swamps. Um... I'm not sure what it is you're asking. Uh, sorry, um, just in terms of any kind of information for the... Like, is there a, a graveyard in that direction? Is there, um, like, a, a morass that people end up sending bodies to, that kind of thing? Uh, the swamp is to the west, not to the east. The Ooh. river is to the east. Ah, okay. And it's oh, heading okay. a away from the swamp. If that helps. Fair enough then. Fair enough. So, um, anything that I know of for living in this area for the last little while that is in that direction, like uh, a coastal town or burg, or no. And what I'm using the the word river generously. Um, it's normally a creek that's uh, swollen its banks somewhat. Uh, 
Um, it's not terribly large at all. Um, most of the time, people wade through it. People fish in it sometimes. Um, and it's generally a, a shallow, sm slow-moving um, creek. But as you get to the bank, um, the water has obviously risen somewhat. And um, it, it's, it's moving, but it's not moving fast. Okay. If someone wanted to swim across it, it would just be a medium maneuver. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be terrible because you could probably touch bottom the entire way. There's mm -hmm. a current, but nothing um, nothing that you would call dangerous or difficult. Okay. Hmm. Um, how long do you wish to follow this thing for? Because after uh, an hour, and it's again going uh, rather slowly, uh, you don't see anyone around. Um, in this area, but it's uh, it may walk all night. You don't know how long it's going to take. Well, I mean, our our plan was kind of destroy it with sunlight. So I mean, I, I feel like either walking to where it's going or walking until it kills itself in the sunlight. So all night. Yeah. I think that our horses are are safe with fear and Treva. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go on an adventure. It's not like he's walking fast. Well, that is it, and we are can we find headed... out. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> are we headed away from the campsite? You are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the campsite is uh, east, not far, but um, east and a little bit north of where you are. You're heading due west and now north. Due west? Or sorry, due east and north. The campsite is west and north. Campsite is west and north, a little bit north. You had um, vaguely eat northeast, and you're now following the river due north. Okay. If that makes any sense. Thank sure. You. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so for my part, I, I only think about following this creature as far as it will go to investigate how these daywalker undead are surviving, if if they are. Mm, I think it's a good idea. It might help us figure out what's going on with the town as well. Yeah. yeah. It seems quite cursed. Definitely. Quite cursed indeed. Hang on, my son is having too much fun and being way too loud. To... <laughs> um, sorry, I'm looking for something specific. How many points does it book? Okay, I'm back. I signed to you and Iko that uh, I'll, I'll go if you want to go, but... Um... And probably only because we're responsible for setting him loose. But uh, we have got better things to do. Okay. Well, and I sign back to you. Well, at this hour, like what? Uh, anything. Like <laughs> <Leave. clears throat> Nope, no, that's not it. Good golly, where did I put this thing? Is sunlight the only thing that'll kill this thing? Uh, anyone who wishes to answer that question w can uh, make a light undead lore. Okay. I actually have undead lore. I don't have it. Mm. With the roll I made previously, would I have that knowledge, or do you want a second roll? I would like a second roll. Okay. With butter. Uh, with. Mm. Come on, light. You know that there are other ways, but uh, sunlight is the most effective. Okay. I'll explain. I've got that. other ways right here. Yeah. <laughs> I think in my head. <laughs> In fact, that is exactly one of the other ways. <laughs> Again, <laughs> accents with you. I play another character, and I'm so into that character with their Spanish, you know, kind of Mexican accent. <laughs> and I keep switching over to it. 
I love it. Arla, have you spent a lot of time in Central America? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yes, I have. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's what I was trying to do. Okay, this is not displaying properly on my side, so I apologize. Um, hopefully, this will um, show up properly for you guys. Okay, yeah, there's that. How undead are breathing. That sounds like undead breath. Everyone go. <laughs> Waiting. <laughs> I have these little sound effects that I'll apply to the recordings every once in a while. And there's this undead selection you can choose. Undead oh, idle. Cool. And the undead are breathing. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> breath. Yeah. Yeah. It's the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> it's that is the dumb. Dumbest thing ever. <laughs> Which makes it the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> We suffocate the undead. Okay, it dies. <laughs> Alright. Old habits die hard. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> well, I signed it to you and you can take credit for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Did that do anything for you guys? Yeah, it was yeah. a map. Can't see anything Excellent. except for us. I see a big is... thing. Oh, I need a spell. It's some kind of tree and bear. Oh boy. The uh, the uh, uh, priest, uh, brother Birdie, he follows to where the um, the river seems to. And unfortunately, I tried to make a waterfall and it just didn't work. So apparently, uh, this is where the water just ends and goes underground. But um, it, it follows um, the stream, and at this time, the sun hasn't quite come up. Okay. Um, you've been following it now almost the entire evening. You're tired. You're all a little bit wet, but you're all tired and you're all hungry. Um, you really wouldn't mind a break. Uh, it hasn't given you much of a break because you have to constantly keep moving to keep it in sight. Mm. By the time you reach this point... Um, you can see dawn on the horizon, but the sun has not yet come up. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brother Birdie stumbles and uh, makes his way over to um, the riverbank and begins to wade across it. Is that... On the far side, uh, you see a bear. And it's a significantly a, a good-sized bear, but... Uh, it, it seems like it's a sick bear. Its hair is falling out. Um, it's uh, somewhat emaciated. And it's standing on three legs with one paw somewhat frozen in the air beneath it. Oh, How embarrassing. Uh, oh, terrible. <laughs> uh, oh, it's, not, it's not facing towards you. It's actually facing towards... Um, the west so you're seeing it from the side and it doesn't pay any attention to brother birdie as brother birdie begins to wade across the creek uh, but the creek is uh, moving quickly enough that the creek gathers him and begins washing him downstream yeah okay. i was gonna say if we could tie him to a tree for while we rested but um in seeing Ooh, that's a good the idea. Animal, I'm gonna cast animal sleep one on it, so I'll I'll prep. Um could you all give me perception rolls, please? So say, oh. Is it still an animal? Oops. Did my roll go? There it is. Sorry, I did it twice. Oh, I like that. That that was a good roll, Kamel. <laughs> I thought that was your second one. Was it? No. no it uh, the first one was a strength. 
Kamal, Varla, and Aiko, um, you've you've been through this journey, and you seem to be holding up uh, better than everyone else. So you're a little, perhaps you're a little more aware of what's going on. But as you look across the bank, um, scattered amongst the grass and the brush and the the shrubbery that um, seems to be growing, you see a lot of bodies. There um, are. Are they alive? Dead? No. No, they're dead. They're not moving. Uh, it looks like they've been in the grass for a while, but you see uh, what look like wolves and goblins. You see a person. Um, you see a deer. Um, you see several bodies, and they're all they're all dead. And there's this bear that seems to be just frozen, just standing there. It's not huffing and snuffling like a bear should. It's just standing there. Okay. And it dro it drops its paw and it paws the ground somewhat. It's making a little hole. It paws once and then it lifts the paw up but its other three legs don't move. It's not looking over at you. It seems to be completely ignoring you. Hmm. I want to stop following Buddy Boy or whoever he is and then stay like on this side of the river to watch what happens. What do you guys think? Does it look like the priest is going to go into the underground water? No, the um, the water water is actually coming out of the underground and it's okay, washing good. back towards the town. Oh. Okay. I don't particularly like that. Um. What is my At this point, Brother Birdie seems to be caught in the river. It's knocked him over, and he's slow drifting away from you. Can I? I don't know. Stick my uh, my polax into him and. Uh... <laughs> Uh, and uh, drag him out? Uh, I will give you one try at it. Let's say that this is a medium maneuver, and you can use... Um, it's a moving maneuver. Uh, if you go to the uh, combat tracker, if you look on the right-hand side in the top right, there's two crossed swords. Uh, combat top right. don't see it. It's right under... You might have to expand the tools. It's a button under the tools menu. Okay. No. Right-hand side of the screen, leftmost, top left button. Oh, yeah, sorry. I know I was looking on my character sheet, but uh, I get what you're saying now. Yeah, all right. Um, when you've got the combat tracker open... Um, it's open. There is, um, among other things, a pair of sh the first pair of shadow dice is MM for moving maneuver. Uh, shadow dice, not seen them. Oh, and I could probably get rid of Chester the Tester because he's not here right now. Mm -hmm. You have to have the the boot open with, for move. Boot and, open. Uh, Thank you. Touch. There we go. MM. Oh. I got you. And I'm using these dice that say zero on them? Yep. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this is a medium maneuver. I think I clicked that already. Yep, I did. Medium. Seems like a fail. Uh, yes. Um, you snag on his robe, um, but he you actually push him under the water, unfortunately. Mm. You can likely try again if you wish to follow him downstream, but you would leave the group a little bit. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Hopefully this one's a little oh, more God. robust. <sighs> Birdie sinks even further. <laughs> uh, so same thing again with the medium yep. and the moving maneuver? Alright, I'll yep. try one more time. Mm, nope. Nope. Unfortunately, he is uh, just too difficult to uh, 
to reach. We're moving in random directions. Mm -hmm. It's not predictable. Can't read his movements. Nope. Um, but the last time that you tried to reach for him, uh, we'll say that he went under the water and you lose track of him. Oh. Yeah, uh -oh. The, is the sun up, by the way? The sun is not up. Um, it should be up in another 30 or so minutes. All right. One can hope. Uh, Varla oh, will have moved closer and will try to affect the bear with her spell of sleep. Animal sleep one, first level. Okay. And while she wanders past the group to get closer, she's going to say, I'll... Uh, I can put this to sleep, but... Uh, I can also talk to it after uh, waking it, just to ask it questions, oh. if it isn't undead itself, of course. Uh, could you give me a perception roll, please, Varla? Yes, sir. There is obviously something wrong with the bear. Um, it's not reacting in any way any way that a bear should react. It's not aggressive, nor is it uh, defensive. Completely ignoring you. Right. But the closer you get to it, the sicker it looks. And that's it. So if for the spell of speech, animal tongues, I've got to touch the damn thing, apparently, in order to talk to it. Oh. <laughs> Worst spell ever. Um, <laughs> so that's why I figure I'll try to sleep it, if it's even yeah. possible. And yeah. then I'll, I'll I don't touch know, it. could be a touching conversation. Oh. Uh. <laughs> and then I'll touch it and then, you know, go by the big boulder and try to, you know, talk to it maybe from there after um, throwing a, a rock to wake it. If And again, all if it's not undead already. I feel like if, uh, if uh, Varla's moving closer, I should move closer also. Yeah, and I'll get my bow out too, just in case. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Quarter stuff ready. Uh, that's fine. Feel free to move your tokens. And uh, is it asking me to approve your move? Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh really? Hold on. Oh, I'm gonna wait until people move. Just hate it when it defaults that. I, yeah, I gotta figure yeah. out how to turn that off. I don't I even know, know if you can. You can. And if you can do you? figure it out, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's always it's, auto on every map. There we go. Okay. It doesn't do it for every map. Like, I think Weird. it's every oh, new map. Oh, now, you're crossing the river? Well, that's the thing. At least this first spell of sleep, I will have cast it before the river, and then... Uh, so let I suppose me we can back. wait on this side of the river and see if that works. Yeah. So get to there and cast my <coughs> sleep spell. I was going to say, where's Nino? Did Nino drown? <laughs> uh, so Animal Master. Let's see if it even goes off. Okay. Oh, i got to set that up under base spell attack, I think. Combat. I don't know if you noticed or not, um, based on the sounds, but as you were walking, uh, the rain has stopped. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I mean, you finally uh, a break from it. Nice. And so You're casting Animal Mastery? No, it's called Animal Sleep. First level on Animal Master spell list. Got it. Uh, I'm just adding my base attack here. Do you, and I don't know because different GMs, do you add your magic stat to your base attack spell or no? Um, it gets added to the roll on the table. Perfect, perfect. So I will fumble table spell. Fumble column attack spell. Uh, skills, I gotta add. Okay, uh, and my stat. Uh, 
And my level, I don't see that. Okay, just to even it out. So this should hopefully work for you, base attack. Okay. Did that roll? No. Nope. Try it again. There's a. There we go. Another one. There we go. I have the target selected. Uh, apparently you don't. Yeah, it's pointing at it. I tried to roll on the token and it didn't roll either. So. All right. Oh, let me. Uh... Do you have that token with a faction? Maybe it's not factioned. Oh, maybe I have to put it in the combat tracker. Oh, yes, It yes. has to be in the combat tracker. Yeah. That's probably why. There we go. Give it a whirl now. Thank you, bud. Uh, you may have to re-add it to the map after it goes on the combat tracker, but I'll try. Here we go. Yeah. Still no target selected. Yeah, you might have to redrag it from the combat tracker to the map now that you've added it. Yeah, you're right. That's okay. All right. I'm just going to manually do it if that's okay. Yeah. Um, what do they see when you cast your spell? Right. So animal sleep, I guess it'll be the silver green radiance again, and it'll just uh, it'll just appear, you know, like cloudiness over the eyes of the creature. The um, it appears around the bear, and normally with a roll like that, you would certainly expect um, an animal to fall asleep. The bear does react; mm -hmm. it turns to face you, and now you understand why it did not work. Right. How the uh, one side of the bear's face has been torn away. Wow. It has no eye. Its tongue lolls out off to the side. Yeah. And it's got small white dots covering so much of its left side of its face you doubt it could see out of that one eye. Yeah. Okay, Paladin, it is all yours. The other <laughs> eye is is milky white. <laughs> right. Uh, it shuffled its feet to turn to face you slightly. And it, it seems to be vaguely looking in your direction. And it paws the ground and digs up some a little bit of dirt with its massive claws. Wow, I wonder. A little bit of dirt. Yeah, I wonder if something's buried there, yeah. It seems to, looking around, uh, you can see several... They might only be six to 12 inches deep, but there's several small roundish holes oh. um, that have had dirt dug out of them um, in various spots uh, around the bear. Are there holes by the bodies? Uh, no, it's just in the area where the bear is standing bear. right now. Okay. Uh, do we get behind a rock? Or I'll stand behind Nino. Or I would I like to, to put it out of his misery. I. So if it's undead, the sunlight in just twenty minutes right. just right. put it out of its misery. Don't you think it would be out of its misery already? Right. Um, well, uh, if it's going to charge us, maybe we get on top of these rocks, these boulders over here to our, uh, to our, our left. west. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that is smart. I scurry up with that. and I see if I can see down into the holes. I doubt there's anything in them. There's not. It's just dirt. And okay. again, um, they're, they're all roughly the same size. Um, 
you think it's reasonable to assume the barrel has has just been digging at these um and you count at least a dozen of them okay um but yeah six inches deep maybe a little more and they're they're not uniform in any way small clumps of dirt and uh small plants that it's dug up uh lying to the side every every count of 20 or maybe a count of 60 its paw drops down it digs up another clump of dirt hmm. stands oh. there rather mindlessly certainly not alive so all of the bodies that are on the ground are there any signs of blight on those bodies could you give see? me a perception roll an easy perception roll i can right. Oh, I didn't take any fauna lore for a druid. <laughs> Spells. Is that because I have lore? Whoa. Hey, guys. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've noticed, but those bodies, they all have those weird white nodules all over them. Interesting. Mm. Uh, I noticed. It is, oh. <laughs> It is very interesting. Uh, where'd the bear go? Sorry, I was trying to oh, move okay. the map and I moved the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You just invented Sorry. a wormhole. <laughs> Did I mention it's an undead dancing bear? <laughs> oh, now I want to keep it. Oh, boy. Cha cha <laughs> bear. Let's go, nope, bear. That's not it. We oh, can well. have bear. Oh, there we go. Now I can move it. Oh, ah. nice. It's much better. It's spreading. No. Uh, something tells me we need to set this whole place on fire. <laughs> Burn it with fire. <laughs> yeah. Burn the land. Burn it all. Anyone have a grease bottle? <laughs> nice. Let's see. The water continues to trickle in front of you. Uh, oh, the right. sun is getting closer to rising water i suppose your choices are to wait it out or uh, wander across and see if you can discover anything else about the bear small waterfall we can interview it um <laughs> oh. interview with a I... vampire <laughs> interview with a vampire bear fire I know, uh, like in fifteen minutes, the sun will come up. Yeah, and that should kill it if it is undead. And if it doesn't, then we'll kill it. But we'll have learned something. Well, that is the yeah. thing. I think. Sorry, that is the thing. I think I I see that everything is um has has rotted here for quite a while. Or you know, maybe they reanimate with the sun, and get hungry. <laughs> I mean, if they were all coming here to dig, um, and then they die when the sun comes up and this thing was only freshly made, then that could explain it, I guess. But none of the other bodies are alive, only the bear. My point being that they got here, started digging, the sun came up and they died. Yeah. Anyway, oh, sorry, I signed that. I see. Okay. So only some and, people will understand. And I say, well, <laughs> that's a good point. Maybe, maybe the other bodies did die as a result of being exposed to sunlight here, and the bear just turned last night. <clears throat> um, the, how are we doing in terms of hunger? The uh, bear has clearly, clearly been dead for much longer than a day. Okay. I thought. Right. Well then. <laughs> you can see the bones of its snout. Wonderful, let's go kill it. Right, half of its face yeah. is gone and rotted away. Yes. That's the source of uh, something. Mm. Something rotten. I sign that I'm going for it. Does okay. everybody have um, missile weapons or ranged weapons? I have a... Uh, I've got I've guns. Got a guns? Yeah. I just flex. Oh, <laughs> I've got a sword and a board. <laughs> I've got a short bow and a, a throwing dagger. 
Yeah, I, w I would almost recommend just staying away from it versus going close. Mm. I, I still think we should wait for the second one because maybe it has survived this long because it's been out of the sunlight. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it doesn't hurt for 15 minutes. Yeah. All right. 15 minutes later, the sun does indeed uh, crawl above the horizon. It gets a tiny bit warmer. And as the shadow shrinks and the bear comes out of the shadow of the trees and the sun is shining directly upon it, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it has... It has pawed the ground two more times. This might be uh, not dead. This might be something else. Is it 50 yeah, feet like... away? Each one of these is five. Three, nine, That's ten. It? It's 50 feet away. I throw my... Um... <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I throw my pole axe of returning. Oh. At the, uh, <laughs> at the bear. Oh, boy. All right. Did anyone uh, else wish to uh, do anything while he gets ready to um, throw his massive pole axe at this thing? Yeah, I'll um, prep a stone throw spell. Yeah, I have my short bow out. Okay. I'm going to take my shurikens out. Oh, in fact, skills. Sir Morgan? Uh, I'm getting my sword and board ready, but uh, I don't have any ranged weapons. Okay. That's because ranged weapons are beneath you. That is correct. Not you now. Can, you can yell really fast. <laughs> <bad. laughs> uh, Kamal, would you uh, like to try and target that bear by control clicking on it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got it. Uh, it's in my line of sight. Oh, cool. Yeah, but I don't see it targeted by your character. Ooh, there, there you go. go. Got it. No, I still don't see it targeted. Not in the combat tracker. Well, I definitely control clicked on it. Um, well, what else I can do? I can't control click on him either. That's really odd. Well, you didn't Is put it, it back I... on the... You didn't uh, remove it from the map and put it back in from the combat tracker, did you? Nope. All right, let's... Uh... Oh. Whoops. I don't out. see it in the, in the combat tracker, but I do see a target around it now. Yeah, me yeah. too. I, I targeted it. Likewise. Oh, hi, puppy. Uh, one moment, I accidentally closed my map, and I wish there was a fast way to make it reopen. Mm -hmm. nope, you that's can not it. drag it to your hotbar, too, as a GM, if you want. Yeah, I might have to. Uh, not that you'll do it often, but there we go. Yeah, All right, we delete him. Ram button bash attack. Small result. Delete token. Delete that token. Ram button bash. Whoa. And... Swim check? All right, when I deleted it, it popped out of the uh, combat tracker, so let me... Hmm. You mind if I take a quick bathroom break? Not at all. I'm like near last, so okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Hmm. Okay, something is goofed up on my side, and I don't know why. I'm going to close and reopen the combat tracker. And Mr. Bear. Mr. Bear does not want to go in. I don't know why. Very stubborn. Oh, 
Oh, because my <laughs> That's funny if I didn't develop it often enough. Oh, we're only third level anyway. Agility. Come on, bear. Don't Denial be like that. Twice, because I could take it at first level. It's unlocked. Oh, because I'm trying. The map to... is... Do I need to unlock the map, maybe? No, map is unlocked. Absolutely bizarre. Hmm. I swear I tested this with Chester the Tester. Yeah, oh, that explains. Don't worry, there were updates all the time, right? So something could have happened. Yeah. True. All right, let me try closing that. And reopening that. I'm absolutely baffled why this doesn't want to do this. Mm. All right, I'm just going to create a brand new bear. Screw you, stupid bear. Bad news uh, bear. Yeah, apparently. Oh, and maybe faction if you haven't attached the red or yellow green. Did we beat him? <laughs> Not so much. Yeah, we wiped the party wiped. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> My party has white pustules all over them. Yep. Oh, <laughs> yeah, for okay. some reason my all the NPCs in my list are gone. That's odd. Yeah. Um Okay, let me check to make sure I've got the module loaded. I do. Hmm. You know what? It's 8 o'clock. Why don't we call it here? Because I know it's getting a little late for you guys. It's been three hours. And I'll have this fixed by next week or next time we play. Sounds good. That's sounds good. good. Yep. Cheers. Yep. Nice I to got to work in the morning anyways, so. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to push it too late. And I apologize. I don't know. I usually don't have technical issues like this, but today apparently yeah. I do. Not worried. Yeah. Fantasy Grounds is like that. Yeah, yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys are seeing it as well, but is your map shaking a little bit as nope. different? No. Okay. Maybe I just need to reboot then. I don't know. Uh, Grim's wife. I, I was never seeing bear in the combat tracker at all. Yeah, yeah, Barrett never showed up in the combat. I don't see it either. Yeah, same. Yeah. Oh, see, I saw it. It was there, and then I deleted it, and now I can't get it back in. Oh. I didn't even see it there in the first place. Oh. And for Weird. the shaking that you're seeing, Grim's wife, make sure to take him to the hospital. I will. Yeah. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> All right. Um, as always, um, if you would submit your uh, experience point sheets, which is I know realize is going to be very small this week. Um, no, no, I've got a whole big list. <laughs> <laughs> and I will make sure I get those to you uh, with definition so you know what you're getting experience for. And um, what's everybody's schedule like in the next couple of weeks? Um, let's see. I'm off uh, this coming Thursday, Friday, Saturday, though there are little things I have to take care of. Oh. And then uh... let me stop it there just in case this goes on Twitch later or YouTube, etc. Um And if it does go online, thank you so much for watching. Uh, pleasure 
and had a lot of fun with uh with the players in Grimm's party here. That's uh you can tell they're they're friends and they've they've been close for quite a while. So that's that's really cool when you've got your buddies and family gaming with you. So take care guys. Happy gaming and we'll catch you again next time. Cheers.